about the rest of you, but I'm ready to talk politics, baby. I'm about ready to talk politics. I think uh, I think Joe Biden has lost his damn mind is what I think. Okay, I think Joe Biden and the Democrats, dare I say that they ain't <laughs> I'm starting to, I don't know if y'all starting to smell what I'm starting to smell. But I'm starting to smell. Hey man, what can you do about it? That's why it's important to try to get here. I can never really get tired of talking politics. I don't know about the rest of you. Sometimes I find myself feeling, but you know, you can only know but so much. That's base, that's downright due to also government incompetence, right? This is about they helping us or they ending child poverty, they doing all this bullshit. First of all, you ain't even putting people back home. You talking about you cutting something in half. How the hell can you cut child poverty in half and you not even putting people back home? This shit is blowing my mind. But wait till you hear this shit. But I'm ready to talk politics, baby. Let's talk politics, baby. Politics is using. I can't get off of these dumbass Democrats talking about they about to end poverty. And <laughs> How great, Joe! Oh my God, this just—he's so amazing. Nancy Pelosi with her. I—I I don't like to say bad because I understand people in power, right? Not you know, it's just as a just to have um logical sense, <laughs> right? You need to goddamn know what type of position you in, right? I, I'm not really in no position uh to win no battle with these motherfuckers. But what I will say is this, man. If you think, and I got older people in my family that just, you know, don't even know what the hell they talking about, but they just going to repeat everything they hear them say, even though nothing's physically happening for you. All right? So back in February, Joe Biden was saying that he uh, was, I think in January also, as early as January, right? He was talking about he supported the $15 minimum wage. And then out of nowhere, he's the one who basically killed it. He was like, I don't think we're going to be able to put it in the bill. This is another point that uh, was made. On February 16th, Biden said that he was going to cancel $10,000 student debt. Democrats, they, they play these dumbass games. When Trump was in office, right, Democrats act like they wanted to cancel up to 50000 Some was talking about canceling student debt altogether and making public colleges tuition free and shit like that. People like Bernie Sanders, whatever. They always talking, but they don't never do shit. So Biden's like, okay, we ain't gonna do fifty thousand, but I'll do ten. He didn't even do that. Everything this this every I, first. If y'all remember back when this shit was first going on the election, and then Biden first won, even before he won during the debates, right? I kept call. I always call Joe Biden habitual liar. Remember, I always say he never told the truth about. Shit. He wasn't in no civil rights movement. He never got locked up to go see no goddamn Nelson Mandela. He never went to no black churches. Everything the man said out of his damn mouth was a damn lie. Or in literally the opposite, right? He say he was for the civil rights movement when he was trying to crush it. He say he was trying to desegregate when he was trying to segregate. It's, uh, it's not only that he lies, but it's always the opposite. The man helped write the crime bill that sent my people to the crime bill to this day is the reason we need help in the first goddamn place. One of the reasons out of many, but that's a big one that he got something to do with. So for him to act like if he canceled student debt, if he gave black folk Medicare for all, if he gave a reparations because he given the three hundred dollar check at the end of the month to help uh, uh, families or people with their goddamn uh, food. You should do that and a lot more for the you done put us the, the, the goddamn hole you put us in you're not even throwing a penny in the bucket so it's crazy to me how you can be responsible somebody can be responsible for all that destruction death the breaking up of families the damn just the, the suffering that the, this dude caused with his ideology and his legislation and the that he put forth and have no sense of responsibility to fix it. And when you do any little bit that goes toward doing something positive, act as if you're doing a favor. You ain't doing us no goddamn favors, right? You can't get credit for get if you owe me a hundred dollars, you ain't get no goddamn credit for paying me ten dollars. You in the mother, you in the hole, bro. So for these people, for the Democrats to think that we supposed to be out here doing backflips for these crumbs, this is literally crumbs. This shit is laughable. And then for the people who don't have kids, don't even get the crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> or for the people that can't claim their kids. Right? These are specifically really going to help married people. Because if you ain't married, even the $3,600, $3,000 bill ain't going to help certain people. Black men, for instance, are going to get the...
the end of this stick, right? Because if you come from a separated home, which is probably separated because Joe Biden sent your black ass to prison, right? So this ain't even helping people that have kids unless you can claim them as a dependent and you in the house. <laughs> because you might have two or three kids and you, I just read that $3,600, $4,000, 8000 that ain't for you. Right? So you either have to have children, you have to be married, or you have to be able to claim them as dependents. But if you're not married or you don't have children or you're in a position where you can't claim your children as a dependent, you ain't getting and that's really, you see what they're going to do is what they always do. I hate to always get racial with this shit, but it just think about it. They're going to try to empower the woman over the man to keep the man in a docile, submissive state. We know that the average back, black family ain't married, may have kids, but of course, ain't in the same household. And I'm talking about men that actually take care of their children. Right? You take care of your children, you help take care of your children, but of course, you know you can't claim them because they ain't in the house with you. So they still set it up to where it's a you to black men. Everybody that knows of someone that is going through something um, with a spouse, a boyfriend, an ex-boyfriend, an ex-girlfriend, anything of that, that they reach out for help. If they know someone is dangerous, volatile, please reach out for help for that person. And again, you still not going to get more than likely it's a good chance you separated out the home because of that goddamn bullshit 94 crime bill that the Democrats, Bill Clinton and Donald uh, and Joe Biden signed and put in the law. <laughs> right. How many families did that break up? I can raise my damn hand. My daddy went and did a bid in D.C. back in the 80s, like back in the 90s. D.C. was the worst prison in America back then at that time. I lost my pops. If my pops didn't go to prison, my moms and my pops would still be together. When my pops got out of prison, he wanted to marry my moms, but she found another n That was a whole nother story, right? But his whole time in prison, I wound up later on in life finding all these letters he was writing home that I never seen. And in all the letters, my moms was the love of his life. He had all these big plans of getting back with her and, you know, doing the whole family thing. But that, man, that ship had sailed, man. You go to prison for a few years, that ship sails. You don't have no idea what the f is going on. You don't, because in prison, it's like time stops, right? The last thing that was going on, the last thing, you know, the last whatever situation you was in with your girl, your wife, or whatever the case is, that's what you know for if you locked up for three years, that's the last moment. So you got that feeling, that's what you're thinking, but out there, life goes on. And then you don't realize it till you get out, right? Those letters don't mean when they writing back, because and you out, then it's like, this is what's really happening. So I seen all these letters. So my pops had mad ambitions of having a family. So it ain't like uh, these damn trope, like black men don't, I'm not family men and black men don't want to raise their kids and, and black men don't stay in the house. I know this not to be true for my daddy. Now, my mama never told me this. Of course, my mama make it seem like everything was his fault. I hated my daddy for so, I thought he left us and didn't want us. And I felt abandoned and all this type of shit growing up as a young man. But after I seen these, all these letters, tons of letters he was writing, and a lot of times I guess she wasn't writing back, right? I was furious with my moms for years. But now I'm not because, you know, I had a woman on my own, right? And I can understand how the game go. You understand? So I know. But my point being is that, yeah, at the end of the day, if you dealing with somebody that then stripped and took everything from you, don't come back and give no goddamn crumbs and think we supposed to be in a position to, what, kiss your ass? Joe Biden is literally uh, is a, a, a big proponent of the things that are wrong in the goddamn country in America, especially for certain groups of people that look like me. He's a big reason. <sighs> It is all these shows that you go watch, all these Uncle Tom has, oh, these, these shows that go on and, and you got to look at the good, the good. They don't look at it from this perspective. Again, if somebody owe you $100 and come give you five, ten goddamn dollars, you ain't giving that no credit. Where the rest of my goddamn money, man? <laughs> right? I've literally been in situations, man, I don't want this.
you owe me you owe me two thousand dollars and you come give me a hundred dollars and you like you you know you want to pat on the back or some <laughs> come on man so all this shit about oh this there's some good things in there for who not for nobody who's aware of what the f is actually going on that could have made a difference like medicare for all giving people health care which would definitely make a big difference for my people and all people really i'm gonna do a story on the medicare this week maybe tomorrow on the difference between other countries and us and how the pandemic has played out and why we got 25 percent of the deaths and only five percent of the population why the hell we got over half a million people dead in the country from this damn pandemic when you got other countries that got under 5,000, right? And then you're going to compare all the countries that actually got health care for their citizens and their people compared to us who don't have it. And then you could get a clear understanding of why this is the way it is here. So let me hurry up and get through this, man. So anyway, like I was saying, man, all this shit about this child tax credit, it ain't doing nothing for the people who don't have ch children and it's specifically a negative thing toward black men like oh boy are you gonna find just think about it like i just told you if you're not married or if you're not in the house <laughs> we know she ain't gonna let you claim the kids i mean you really gotta be in a situation where even if you claim the kids you give me the money though because she's not working or some <laughs> dog. i literally know women who would rather let <laughs> a third party claim their kids and get less right then let the father claim they rather go ahead and let somebody else claim their kid and get five six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars you know how we do you go claim the kids get back the tax credit back in the day throw them a few hundred they literally rather do that i ain't giving that so this ain't helping though this is a specifically ain't helping black uh, um uh, i would say a large portion of black men we always get the end of the stick and then after you go there everybody all the other men or women who take care of their children it says um so he ain't canceling student debt there's no uh 15 dollars minimum wage this is what biden said about the student <laughs> this is what he said about the student debt. he said i don't think that in this moment of economic pain and strain that we should be eliminating interest on the debt that is accumulated number one and number two is i am prepared this is a quote from biden right I am prepared to write off $10,000 in debt, but not $50,000 in debt, end quote. Then he turned around and didn't do it. He said, with all this going on, the economic hardship, I'm not trying to give nobody no relief. That sounds stupid as hell. I told you, Joe Biden is not very bright. I, I just don't understand how he became president, man. I, I guess if you got damn Trump as the, as, the, as the damn basement, I guess you can go to Biden. Okay, during a time of economic pain and strain, you don't think it's the, this is the right time to give people relief? What planet is this? This is what I'm telling. This is dumb as hell, man. This house. He said during this time of economic pain and strain, I don't think we should be giving people relief. I don't. This is economic pain and strain. Why would I do something to help people? I'm not trying to help people. Let me tell them. I'm telling them. I'm okay. I do ten thousand. Even though you might owe one hundred fifty thousand, you might owe ninety thousand. All right, we're gonna help you with ten thousand of your student loans and student debt. <laughs> but then he turned around and he didn't even do that. He didn't do it. So he basically said during the time of economic pain and strain and struggling, what I look like helping the American people because I told you the system is built for your ass to suffer. Freedom ain't sitting at home like I'm doing even now. Being able to eat a meal or be able to watch a Netflix or a movie I want to see or come on YouTube and, and do a live stream. This ain't no god damn freedom I, a lot of us do this we doing because we've lost our freedom <laughs> you're not doing what you're doing because of freedom you're doing what you're doing despite of not having free because because of not having free this is why we in the situation we in this is why we struggling we fat we lazy we sick we unhealthy mental health condition we burdened right <laughs> and this is what we call freedom nah man this ain't no freedom freedom is when your ass out there and we out there in the mother streets freedom is when we don't give a damn what you're talking about nah i ain't clapping nah i'm not saying thank you Give me what's mine. Let's take this back. This is our country. I don't know how many of y'all went to go protest, but if you ever been to a protest and you ever stood for something, man, you feel free as f <laughs> It's liberating. You might die. You might get shot. Who knows what's going to happen? But you rather go out like that when you out there. You rather go out like that than, you know, go out like a sucker. Right? I can understand people who never been a part of a protest people who never uh stood for anything you don't know that feeling you don't know what freedom actually is you never tasted it but if you taste it this is why some of us are ready for a revolution if you taste it you know that's freedom so i don't have no misconception about this bull stimulus bill and i'm not giving this man hey man it's a couple good things in there like i said but again it's like owing somebody two thousand dollars and you giving them ten bucks yo b 
at the end of the day, man, I would just tell you, man, keep your goddamn money and bring me bring me what you owe me. And then you should give me give that person a time frame. You got to the end of the mother. <laughs> That's usually how that goes. Right? You owe me two thousand dollars. You're going to bring me 50 bucks. Keep that. I don't know. Hopefully you can flip it. You need to do something with it. You got to the end of the week to bring me my money. You got to the end of the week to pay me what you owe me. And then if not, we go to the next level. That's how it works. Except for with us, with the government. We just eat, sit back and take it and let it happen and watch. If this was any other country, like I say, they all out in the streets in every other country, right? The little governments in other countries try to do little to keep their people doors out. Say, hey, bro, I don't want that. like $300? You know what? Won't you keep that? <laughs> Cause that's what's about to happen to me. Come back correct with what the fuck <laughs> You owe me, and you got to this time, and when you don't come back at the time that you're supposed to come back and give me what you owe me, then there's gonna be some Joe Biden. It ain't this if you don't come back at the time. I'm from the streets. I agree. You know what it is. If I tell you and I look you in your face, you try to pay a debt that you know you're supposed to pay me on the first, right? You're going to pay me on the end of the month. I gave you three months to pay me. Three months that went by. It's July now. You owe me in July. And you come to me and you only got 5% of what you owe me. And you don't really even explain. You don't have no plan on paying. You're not telling me when you're going to actually pay me what you owe me. You don't have no intention. You don't show that you have any intention of giving me. You come with like 5% of what you actually owe me and act like it's all good. This is what Joe Biden and the Democrats and the government is doing. Right? Then they make it like it's all good. We give you, th we don't give you 1400 <laughs> Hey, man, if this was a real reality and from like what I, where I'm from and what I know, nah, but you know what, B? Keep that. You're going to need it. Hey, man, next time I see you, man, you got a week, bro. I'm going to give you an extra week. If you don't have the money, if you don't have what you owe me, and that's real. So that's the way I feel about this whole stimulus. Fourteen hundred dollars, and then they cheering and smiling and doing some. Shit. I like, I don't know what this old white people do this shit. I don't know what that that is. About made me knock my goddamn glasses off, man. The hell is all this? Like, oh yeah, we you ain't you ain't helping no damn body, man. I mean, you are not. What I'm saying is, you are not helping nobody in the premise that like you're not doing nothing for us. <laughs> you're not doing nothing for us. Like, okay, you gave us the fourteen hundred, and you gave the three hundred for the unemployment, and you went ahead and extended the rent and mortgage moratorium so people don't actually get put out in the goddamn street. And you're gonna give people who have kids three hundred dollars per kid per month at the end of every month. Then that only goes for a year, literally. That's for the $300 a month for the kid, the child tax credit. But literally, the rent moratorium and the, and, and the mortgages for uh, not being homeless and being kicked out your home, the, un, the unemployment and the $1,400 check for six months, and then it's over. So this $1,400 got to last you till September. And in September, we back at the square one. The same people going to be owing their rent, even more rent now. <laughs> this is the that I don't get is that people going to owe more now. Every time they extend it just for a little bit and don't just, you know, fix the problem. Okay, so now September comes, people owe more rent. They're they're further in the hole, still back to square one with unemployment benefits and all the benefits running out. And up until then, for a whole six months, you're not giving nobody else no more help with nothing. Get the f if we go six months, if we make it six months and I don't see a protest, I would just surrender and say it's over. I'm going to say even if I don't do a damn protest myself personally, God damn it, I don't... If this shit don't change in six months, I promise you, in the next six months, I don't give a damn if it's a one-man army out there, motherfucker. You're going to see me out there. Personally, Portal Gun organize something. In D.C. too. Watch. By next September, if like it's some where we got to lock down again and we still talking about this dumbass vaccine and the virus has got 20 new variants and all this I'm antsy now, really. <laughs> I'm ready to jump, right? I'm ready to goddamn jump. I'm ready to jump on a bandwagon. If somebody else make a move, I'm busting a goddamn move. I promise you that, right? You've ever been in that situation where I'm not a totally in a position to for me to actually do what I need to do myself personally. Like, I, I'm not in a position to organize no mass protests. Uh, I don't even know how, you know, I would have to study and research and it's going to take me a while to even learn how to do some shit like that. Then I would have to put in the work and talk to the right people and still have to come collab with other organizations, all type of shit. 
you got to go through to get some like that done to actually get a movement, you know, going. Right? That takes time. But if I got to go out there by my goddamn self, you're going to see Portal prime time on the live. Goddamn, probably, they probably going to shoot me down. But I'm literally, I'm not scared to die. If I could die young and do what needs to be done, then to live old and decrepit and not accomplish and do Man, I'd, be, I'd, I'd rather go out like a G. But if I'm going out for what I love or what I believe in, that's the way I would want to go out. I would rather go out young. And I got to be careful what I say, man, because I'm not the only one with that mindset. You know who else had that mindset? And I got to be...